In 2010, a newly elected Conservative government announced a huge wave of mass public sector cuts. Some of the hardest hit by these cuts were the disabled. Andy Green is an integral part of Disabled People Against the Cuts, who are leading the fight back by engaging in creative civil disobedient actions, such as blocking busy city junctions with their wheelchairs. Andy talks here of the need for activists to think beyond simple A to B marches. Andy also worked closely with Anna Walker from UK Uncut, another anti-austerity campaign group who have popularised civil disobedient actions with their protests against high street tax avoiding companies. The TUC does marches. Um, they do them very well. You know, they put lots of people out on the street to take them from point A to point B, have a lot of very worthy people on stage to tell you um, how things should be. We found a lot of the old school kind of campaign and the petitions, the reports, the lobbying, the marching. But I also think we found the kind of media driven event campaigning gig campaign for want of a better word these events very much bring people into a space to tell others what their story is and i think that's a key difference just the participation not just on the day but they also give people an opportunity to contribute to the building of um these events you know um through ideas through social media through um you know putting on your own local events around the country um for people who haven't maybe been involved in politics in any way before there's a safe environment to come and get involved they're family friendly i think within the mainstream media there's been a general feeling that the counter narrative and not just activists but people's stories individual stories aren't given that same weight or space it's kind of using the media's own rules or you know using the media's own kind of criteria for stories and turning that on itself and, and, and come up with something that demands attention, that demands space in, in the mainstream media, simply because um, it feeds into what newsmakers want. Probably people were best known for the Atos stuff. And Atos are a French IT company who have been brought in by the government to run parts of welfare reform around assessing disabled people for their eligibility for their disability benefit. It, brought the issue right clearly there. We used that opportunity around the Paralympics to get into the homes of every single person in this country day after day, get into the headlines of the news, of the broadcast news, of the print journalism, of online journalism. We dragged them through the headlines for a week and what we have done is make sure that everybody knows what they're up to, that everybody is scrutinising them far more. The Public Accounts Committee have come out and ripped them apart. 100 or more parliamentarians have come out and signed a petition um, in Parliament for their you know, contract to be ended. Without that, a huge part of it is that civil disobedience. We could have just stuck to campaigning and lobbying and marching and all those things. I think ultimately all of that goes on, right? But it gets you so far. And I think that all of that is done in the expectation that things will be given by those who make decisions and have the power to carry out these decisions, that they will give you something because you do this work, because you have asked for it. But they've never given anything. They've always, those people have always had to have stuff taken from them. They've always had to have rights taken from them. They've always given it grudgingly. They would still have kids up chimneys. They would still be shipping people over from Africa in chains if people didn't stand up and demand that those things stopped happening. That's why those things stopped happening, because people took risks and got out there, women's rights, whatever area you look at, it's because people stood up and challenged. And yes, the traditional forms of campaigning will get you in the door. Yes, they will get you face-to-face -face meetings and you will be part of whatever is going on and, you know, all of that. And that's all great if that's what you want. But actually, change comes a lot slower that way. And the only way you can be sure of having any real impact, any real ch chance of m making change, it's by actually demanding. And the way you do that is to challenge their power. And, you know, the only way you can challenge their power is to, is to express your own, is to build your own and say, you've no real power over me, you know, and, you know, if I choose to do this, I will. And um, that's why we do it, because it has to be taken. It was never given. 
what the anti-cuts movement had learned about DPAC or disabled people, I think two things. One importantly about themselves is to look at are they being inclusive, not just for disabled people, but for women, for younger people, for older people, for people who, you know, whose first language is in English, you know, lots of different things. You know, are we an inclusive, accessible campaign for everybody we're trying to reach? We've done a few direct actions together, UK Uncut and DPAC. In terms of how they work, they were really, really good, you know. They were really honest and said, we really don't know much about working with disabled people and, you know, um, we're willing to learn. As it happened, it worked very well. And I think they've become a lot smarter in terms of access and participation um, in what they do. And we've become a lot wiser in terms of using the media, um, designing demonstrations that are kind of a bit smarter in terms of a media hook. There's no greater example of how powerful a person can be than to join with other disabled people, to go out into the middle of the street and physically close down the centre of a city shows you that collectively you have the power to do anything and it's worth a hundred conversations and it's worth, you know, just that one act of defiance, of resistance can tangibly show you better than anybody can describe to you what you can do with the will and and a collective, you know, and th there is no greater power than, you know, than to be able to go out with a group of people and say, today, this is my space, my argument for as long as I choose it to be. And to come away knowing that whatever else happens, you've had that time and that space to, to, to have your voice heard, yours and others who have come together, so that people understand that these decisions that are being made are impacting not on numbers but on people's lives and we don't hear enough of that side and you know these spaces indirect actions are for people to come together and have their voice heard. You can cut us had a, a message from from the start that's been we're in crisis people people's lives are being devastated now is not the time for marching from A to B we that's great but people need to do more than that. I want to do more than that. My neighbours want to do more than that. Finding a way of creating actions that are taking people out of their comfort zone, but also at the same time, not hugely intimidating, not for a very exclusive sort of set of activist people. I think that one of the great things about UK and Cut is that anybody at any age, anywhere in the country can take action on their local high street with their parents and their children and their friends and their neighbours. It doesn't need to be sort of a highly trained crack squad of activists who, um, who have formed an affinity group. We turned banks into libraries and we turned Topshop into a a school playing field and we've turned Starbucks into women's refuges but we've also done roadblocks with disabled activists we've blocked off Westminster Bridge over the NHS bill I think that going on marches is important I think that signing petitions is important I think writing to your MP or going to visit your MP is important but I don't think it's enough and I think that we have to do much, much more. The only way that we can challenge an economic system that has such a stranglehold on the way that this country is run and ultimately our day-to-day -day lives is by taking a step out of your comfort zone and trying to put your body in the way of something. I think direct action is about making a bold statement, making a powerful statement with not just not just words, not just, you know, a flick of a switch, a click of a mouse. If I felt that, you know, signing a petition would do the same thing, then I would gladly sign a petition, but I just don't think it's as effective because it doesn't give the same message of anger and desperation